Hello friends, I'm Jill Morricone and I want to welcome you to another lesson of 3ABN Sabbath School panel. We're on lesson number two of our study, Rest in Christ. This particular lesson is restless and rebellious. If you find yourself in either one of those categories, which I have sometimes, this lesson is for you. I want to encourage you to grab your own Bible and study along with us. If you don't have a quarterly, you can go to the following website. That's absg.adventist.org. That stands for Adult Bible Study Guide. .adventist.org. You can download your own copy and study with us this edition of 3ABN Sabbath School Panel. We always love it when you join us for 3ABN Sabbath School panel because you're our family. And I'm sitting on the set with some more of my 3ABN family. I'm going to introduce them to you at this time. To my left, Pastor John Lomakin, glad you're here. Always good to be on a set where we learn something more and be able to disseminate it in Christ. Amen. What a privilege. Pastor Kenny, what a privilege it is to study together and share. It is, and I thank God for that opportunity and privilege. Thank you. Amen. To your left, my sister, Shelly Quinn. Um, you are a word warrior, and I'm grateful for that. Oh, I'm so grateful for the word, but we're just thankful that you're tuning in. You know, each one of us is excited to share what we've learned mm -hmm. through our study, but then we learn from each other as mm, well. That's right. Amen. I know that's my favorite part about Sabbath School is learning from each one of that's you. Right. So thank you. Last but not least is Pastor Ryan Day. Glad you're here, brother. Amen. It's a blessing to be here, and I'm excited about my lesson today, which is entitled Faith Versus Presumption. Well, Amen. Mm. Looking forward to the study. I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles and notebooks and get ready to take notes. But first, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Um, Pastor John, would you pray for us? Sure, let's pray. Loving Father in heaven, the privilege is ours to be able to open your word and mm -hmm. to disseminate it. What we have learned, Lord, we pray that you'll encase it in the direction and power of your Holy yes. Spirit. And we pray for more than intellectual stimulation, but mm -hmm. we pray for heart transformation. Yes. Use each one of us in the understanding that we have been given and the power of your word mm -hmm. to bring glory and honor to you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 This week's lesson, lesson number two, is titled Restless and Rebellious. You know, they say that animals are restless before some sort of disaster takes place. It's some sort of sixth sense, you could say, or premonition of something happening. Mm -hmm. I know Greg and my cat, Pebbles, she sleeps in the garage, and then she comes out during the day and spends the day outside. She loves it. When we go to work, well, some days it's perfectly sunny. It's a good looking day. It's not too hot. It's mm. just perfect. And you think, well, why doesn't she go outside? And she turns around and she stays in the garage. Mm. And no amount of coaxing will get her out. Later that day, almost always, a thunderstorm crops up. And I think, how did she know it was going to rain today? How did she know that the thunderstorm was going to happen? Um, they had an example in the lesson about animals who have exhibit restless behavior prior to a major earthquake. Mm -hmm. They said 15 minutes before the 5.8 magnitude quake mm -hmm. hit Washington, D.C. This was on August 23, 2011. The lemurs at the Smithsonian National Zoo, they called loudly for 15 minutes mm -hmm. before the ground started to quake. This week, we don't look at examples of animal restlessness. We look at examples of human restlessness. And it's not our restlessness is not brought about by earthquakes or natural disasters. It's brought about by sin. We're going to look at the effects and consequences of sin, bringing restlessness to the human heart. Mm -hmm. Our memory text is 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. We're going to look at some examples, Old Testament, children of Israel time, at their restlessness and their rebellion. My particular lesson on Sunday is Restless in the Wilderness. Turn with me to the book of Numbers. We're going to be spending time in Numbers. We're going to Numbers chapter 11. Now, the book of Numbers, the Hebrew title for this book is literally In the Wilderness, and it continues as part of the dramatic story of Israel's journey with God. If you look at the timetable where we're at, the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the third month after God liberated them from Egypt. And they camped at Mount Sinai for probably 11 months. 
God taught them how to be his covenant nation. Remember, they had come out of slavery. So God's teaching them, and he established his sanctuary among them. Now the people are ready to pick up and to move forward and conquer the land of Canaan. Hmm. We see, I've divided the lesson into five sections, Pastor John, uh, that I see in the Israelites' restless rebellion and then 11 takeaways hmm. that we can take today. So the five uh, sections, first we see the Israelites' complaint. This is in Numbers 11. Then we see Moses' complaint. Okay. Then we see God's solution for Moses, God's solution for the Israelites, and the end result. Those are our five sections. So let's start with the Israelites' complaint. Numbers 10, they were just departing Mount Sinai. They're getting ready to go. They're headed out into the wilderness. Numbers 11, verse 4 through 6. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we so freely ate in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our very eyes. Takeaway number one. Be careful with whom you associate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You notice it was not the Israelites who initially longed for Egypt, who initially said, give us meat. Mm -hmm. It was the mixed multitude who yielded and they influenced the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Be careful with whom you associate. That's right. Take away number two. Be careful when you complain or treat with contempt the gift that God has given you. God gave them the gift of manna. God blessed them with food. There was no way to get food in the desert. And God gave them this gift and they spurned his gift. Mm. And they treated with contempt the gift that God had given to them. Mm. Do you treat with contempt the gift that God has given to you? God, I want a different spouse. God, I want a different car. God, I want a different house. God, I want a different job. Be careful when you complain or treat with contempt the gift that God has blessed you with. Now, let's, that's the Israelites' complaint. Let's look at Moses' complaint. We jump down to verse 10. We're in Numbers 11, verse 10. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a guardian carries a nursing child, to the land which you swore to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to bear these people alone because the burden, it's too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. If I found favor in your sight, do not let me see my wretchedness. Mm. Wow. Take away wow. number three. Be careful when you blame God for your own issues wow. or the issues of other people. What did Moses say? This is in verse 11. Why have you afflicted your servant? It wasn't God's fault. Mm. God wasn't afflicting Moses with what was going on. The people were in open rebellion. The That's people right. were restless. The people were in sin. And yet Moses says, God, why have you afflicted me in this portion? Mm -hmm. Be careful that you don't blame God for either your own issues or the issues of other people. Takeaway number four. Be careful not to take on the emotional burden of your work. That's good. Well. This is something that I need to learn, yeah. and I am seeking to learn. Mm -hmm. What does Moses say in verse 12? Did I conceive all these people? For they weep all over me. Have you ever taken work home? Have you ever cogitated on it at night? Have you ever agonized with the Lord about it? Be careful not to take on the emotional burdens of your work. Mm -hmm. Take away number five. Burnout is real. And it can lead you to feeling overwhelmed. What did Moses say? The burden, it's too heavy for me. I can't bear it. I am overwhelmed. Take away number six. Burnout, it leads to isolation. What did he say? 
I am not able to bear these people alone. Mm -hmm. He wasn't alone. No. He had right. God right by his side. He had people, as we will see, who stepped into the gap and helped. But yet he felt isolated because of that burnout. Take away number seven. Burnout can lead to depression and even suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Please kill me here mm. and now. Burnout can lead to that. So let's look at God's solution for Moses. Now I find it interesting. The Israelites had a problem. Moses had a problem. You would think if you go in order, God's going to give a solution to the Israelites, but he doesn't. He, he works with Moses first. Mm. So let's see his solution to Moses in verse 16, Numbers 11, 16. Mm. The Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of the meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them. They shall bear the burdens of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Mm -hmm. Take away number eight. God understands our human weakness. Yeah. God provides grace, right. hope, and help. Right. What was the solution? No. Seventy elders who would assist Moses as representative tribal leaders. God anointed these 70 men with his spirit, and they bore the burden with Moses. Amen. So if you are going through something right now, God understands your weakness and he will provide grace and help and hope when you need it most. Right. Let's look at God's solution for the Israelites. To me, God has a sense of humor. Check this out. Numbers 11, 18. You shall say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow and you shall eat meat. Uh -oh. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, not two days, not five days, not 10 days, not 20 days, but you shall eat a whole month mm. until it comes out your nostrils and becomes loathsome to mm. you. They're going to start puking because you have despised the Lord who is among you and have wept before him saying, why did we ever come up out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. Take away number nine. What we think we want is not always what we want. Oh, mm, right. In other words, the thing we want the most can become hated to us. Yes. Mm. Right. I think about Ammon. Remember that story in 2 Samuel 13, and he burned with lust toward his sister, and he raped her. And right after that happened in 2 Samuel 13, 15, the Bible says Ammon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. Sometimes mm. what we want the most becomes hated to mm. us. Go on. Take away number 10. God's judgment or discipline always fits what we need. Wow. His yeah. correction is out of love. His correction provides what is needed for our continued sanctification and growth in Jesus. He gave them what they wanted, which is meat, but it turned into a corrective discipline yeah. by giving them more than what they asked for. What is the result? The Lord caused a great wind to come and the quail came mm. in and it stood up. What does it say? Two cubits above the surface of the ground. Mm. And the person who gathered the least gathered 10 homers, which is 60 bushels of quail. Oh, and the word of God says, as the meat was between their teeth mm. before they even chewed it, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people and the Lord struck them with a very great plague. Wow. Hmm. Takeaway number 11, the last takeaway. Disobedience, it has consequences. That's right. Amen. Not uh, what we always hoped for or what we wanted, but it has consequences. Yes, it has. That's yeah. Time. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's that's, that's like really a surgeon. good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get all those points in there. I mean, five points and 11 takeaways, but thank you so much for covering right. that. And it always yeah. stimulates us to be challenged. Mine is entitled, It's Contagious. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard one of my favorite preachers, Elder Brooks, and I know he's resting in the Lord now. He says, why is it that you cannot catch health, but you can always catch a cold? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. There are certain things that are not contagious. There are certain things that are contagious. It's amazing, as one person once said, truth is just lacing up its shoes mm -hmm. while a lie has already traveled around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, when we look at negative things, they tend to have a greater impact on our lives than the positive. 
That's why the Bible speaks against division and rumors and backbiting and gossip. Come on. But this is not something that the New Testament addresses alone. It was prevalent. It's prevalent in human nature because of sin that's right. and all the characteristics. When we begin to complain, and that's why it talks about the contagion that Miriam and Aaron were affected by, leaders, co-leaders, until they decided that they wanted more than what God had given to them. And I like the way you pointed that out. This is also found in the life of Uriah. Uriah was a very successful leader for 52 years until when he yeah. got to 68 years old. He, began, he wanted to become a priest and God called him to be a king. And he began to covet what God never yeah. gave to him. Same thing happened to David. Same thing happened to Samson. Yeah. And you'll notice that the thing that you crave the most becomes the thing that binds you the greatest. Yeah. So be careful when you start yeah. craving things that God never gave to you. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And I'm going to lead into this. And what are Miriam and Aaron upset about? Let's look at this. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And thank you for leading into that, well, Jill. Mm. It talks about Marion and Aaron rebel. Mm. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married for he had married an Ethiopian woman. <laughs> so they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? Mm. And the Lord heard it. Well. Mm. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Mm. One of the takeaways, I use the word takeaways, <laughs> is remain humble. God will deal with those who don't like the position he has put you in. Mm -hmm. You know, you never have to defend yourself. When you, when you stand where God has put you to stand, no one can move you from that spot, mm -hmm. regardless of what their attempts may be. I decided to look into this because a lot of people look at the story and say, well, this had nothing to do with the race of Moses' wife, but it had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you look at it, and I, I, I decided to look up this uh, story from a Jewish perspective. Mm. And I went to a, a very well-established uh, ministry called Ask the Rabbi. Mm -hmm. And they decided to go ahead and break down the nationality of, of um, Moses' wife. Uh, they said she was a Cushite, which was, which, uh, which, uh, which was of the ancestry of either Cush, which is the Nibian tribe uh, in Northeast Africa, or Arabians. The son of Ham, mentioned in the book of Genesis, had been identified with nations of, in Africa like Ethiopia, Egypt, Libya, mm -hmm. and Canaanites and the Arabians. She says, Miriam was referring to Moses' Midianite wife, Zipporah. So Zipporah was the Ethiopian woman that they were complaining about. Some explained she was referring to a Cushite because of the nomadic desert-dwelling Midianites somewhat resembling the Cushites or that Zipporah herself was unusually dark-skinned and homely. And, wow. and Miriam didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And so they decided, but if you look at the story, that wasn't the issue. <laughs> the issue was they didn't like the fact that the Lord spoke through Moses. Yes, yeah. that's right. And earlier in the story, they were co-leaders mm -hmm. until God decided, okay, you may have a head elder or head deacon, but I'm speaking directly to you. Well. Yeah. And they didn't like the fact that God decided to give Moses information that they thought that they had right to. So instead of mm. being humble about it, they found something to nitpick. Mm. It wasn't, his wife wasn't the problem, mm -hmm. but they wanted to sidetrack. Sure. And you'll discover that a lot of times when people are complaining about things, eventually they will get to the issue. Mm -hmm. They'll say, I, you know, I don't like that car you bought. <laughs> you said, but my car has to do with anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that song you sing. What does it have to do with anything? I just can't stand when you preach long sermons. What, has, what does it have to do with anything? <laughs> what their meaning is, well. what their meaning is, yeah. and I've found otherwise in jail, in leadership, <laughs> we all know that when you're in leadership, don't ever decide to, to shape your leadership based on people's complaints. Mm. That's right. Follow this except you pray and ask God, did I do something yeah. to warrant that complaint? Mm. Because I've been in the position where yeah. if people complain about something, I say, Lord, did I do something mm -hmm. to warrant that complaint? Mm. And I found on some occasions I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I've decided, yeah. okay, Lord, humble me mm -hmm. and uh, make it very clear that what you want me to do is going to remove that complaint in the future. Mm -hmm. But I chose not to attack the individual because mm -hmm. the individual, I've discovered, it's better to win the person than win an argument.
Mm -hmm. But yeah. when I looked at the background of, of uh, Zipporah in the Berean study Bible, the passage that we often read in, in Jeremiah 13, 23 is read this way in the Berean Bible. Can a Cushite mm -hmm. change his skin mm -hmm. or a leopard its spots? Mm -hmm. Is this a different wife? No, the question is, and where does she come from? So they say, can the Cushite, instead mm -hmm. of the e Ethiopian, Ethiopian. Right. They, they connect the two together in the right. Berean Bible, which is a, a strong translation of Jewish influence. So it had nothing really to do with her, but they made her race an issue. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we face issues in modern society that has to do with racial issues. But if you go to the surface, it really comes down to the fact that we don't recognize our equality in the sight of God. Amen. I think it's Acts 17, 26 says, from one blood came all nations of men. Yes. So if you may be caught in the vortex of issues that are based on inequality issues, realize that, hey, in the Garden of Eden, there was just Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And if your daddy is anybody but Adam, you have a serious issue. Yeah. <laughs> if your mother right. didn't start to be called by Eve, I would uh -oh. say that uh, you're not from this world. Mm -hmm. Recognize that we all came from the same blood. That's right. From one blood came all nations, to yes. one blood all nations That's must good. go. So I have um, a question I need to ask. How did God respond to their complaint? Mm. Let's look at Numbers chapter 12, verse 4 to 13. I'm going to try to cover these. And then I have about four takeaways, three takeaways. All right. Okay. Numbers chapter 12, verse 4. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, mm. to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. Mm. And they both went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, mm. I, the Lord, mm -hmm. make myself known to him in a vision. Mm. Good. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all, he is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, mm. even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Wow. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them and they departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Mm. Then Aaron turned toward Miriam and there she was, a leper. Mm. Mm. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord, please do not mm. lay his sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. Yes. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, please heal her, yes. oh God, I pray. And you know, in mercy, God did heal. Mm. Three very important points. God directs us about the attitude of leadership. One, respect leadership. It's good. Mm. You may not agree with it. First mm. Thessalonians 5, verse 12 to 13. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you. This is the NIV. Mm -hmm. And are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, be at peace among yourselves. Mm -hmm. Respect those that God put in leadership above you. Secondly, God gives divine wisdom to those who chooses. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 11 and verse 14, where there is no counsel, what happened? Mm -hmm. The people fall. Yeah. But in the multitude, multitude of counselors, mm -hmm. there is safety. Amen. And the multitude means God can speak wisdom into the mm -hmm. hearts and lives of people mm -hmm. so they can be synchronously uh, giving you advice that God had given them clearly. And the other thing is be very careful to determine your future on the advice of one individual. Yes, Check right. it out by God's word, because mm -hmm. if the person's heart is not in the right place, they could be sending you down a path of destruction. Right. Mm -hmm. Thirdly and finally, honor leadership that is under God's spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. Romans 13 verse 1, mm -hmm. let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. If God has appointed pastors, leaders, elders, teachers, respect them because they are a representative of God's authority. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor John. That's Wonderful great. lessons. We're going to continue in just a moment. Welcome back to lesson number two, Restless and Rebellious. We pick it up with Pastor Kenny in Tuesday's lesson. You know, Tuesday's lesson to me is, is a real good lesson. And thank you guys for what you did. So it's such a, a, a good foundation which we can build upon. You know, I've heard it said, talk about restlessness leads to rebellion. Now, how often have you heard that the idle hands are the devil's workshop? Amen. Mm. So I kind of grew up with that. And I've heard it said, you know, a lot of times. And I kind of wondered what that all meant. But, you know, idleness 
uh, here has a connotation of being lazy. It also has the ones of uh, uh, thought of inactivity and, uh, you know, things like that. So we don't want to be that. We don't want to be where the devil can use us. And uh, I think the workshop, I looked at it, I said tools. You know, okay. doing construction, different things. I think of tools all the time. You know, so we have to be careful even about the tools that we use. We want to use that which God gives to us. Another person put it this way, tools, idleness, idle mind and brain is the devil's workshop. Hmm. That makes sense to me. So I wonder how this might fit into our lesson. I hope we'll see that as we go along here. Israel finally coming, you know, to the borders of Cana. What a wonderful time. I feel like that's where we are here in this world today. We're, we're, we're nearing home. Hmm. We are nearing home. Hmm. And the enemy is not content, and so he's going to put up all kind of smoke screens. He's going to do everything he can to try to, you know, hamper that which is supposed to take place. And um, so he sent out, uh, we realize here that, that there was people that were sent out to explore the land. And I often wonder about that even when I was young, like, oh, why did they go out? God said they could have it. You know, they could have the land. So anyway, this 12, 12 spies were sent out. We're going to read that in Numbers 13, 27, and onward, just a few verses. And we'll examine several points, I think, that hopefully will encourage us and help us along the way. Starting in Numbers 13, verse 27, it says, And they told him and said, We come into the land, whether thou sendest us. Surely it floweth with what? Oh, milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Mm. Nevertheless, the people be strong and dwell in the land, the cities and the wall, and are very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the uh, Amalekites dwell in the land of south, the Hittites and the Jezebites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, notice, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and the coast of Jordan. Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. I love that. <laughs> and uh, possess it, for we are able to no, overcome it. But the men went up with him and said, We are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. How often we hear that, how often we might use right. that excuse, and that we, we should not do that. <laughs> and they brought up an evil report out of the land, which they had searched in the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it. Now, notice this interesting land of milk and honey, but all of a sudden it's going to be a land that eats us up. Yeah. So what's <laughs> happening here? You know, sometimes when we get away from God, our story changes. Oh. One time we see it this way, and then we get away from God, we begin to see it another way mm -hmm. and tell it in a different way. So we need to be very careful here. And the, the verse uh, 33 just simply says right there, We can't go up there because there's giants there, and I'm going to be a grasshopper. <laughs> or I look like a grasshopper, or small as a grasshopper. You know, God never called us to be grasshoppers. That's right. He never called us to be the tail. He called us to be the head. That's right. It's just that simple. God has given this movement a message like no one has ever given, the understanding right. of Scripture and prophecy, and we need to really stick close to that. It's interesting, as these 12 spies, as it were, went out, first of all, where did they go wrong? When did they go wrong? Mm. How could they go wrong? Here's the land of milk and honey. Here we are. We're coming up to it right now. We're getting ready to possess it. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, we find it in the church sometimes. The church want to move forward, you know, to go do some evangelism. What happens sometimes? Right. Oh, all of a sudden, something happens. Yeah. Something happens in the church. Somebody gets in an argument. Something, the devil causes something to happen. And they said, notice this, they refused to believe God's word. That's where they went wrong, number one. Mm -hmm. and we can look at all the other stuff down the road, but number one is... They refuse to obey the Lord. They, they search the land. Uh, they say, may search the land. And Numbers 13, 1, just look at that. It says here, they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the children of Israel. That would be a prophecy, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? That's right. That was before it took place. I gave it to them. So by faith, we just accept that and go on and say, okay, praise the Lord. They said, but they said what? We must search the land. Mm -hmm. We want to see. <laughs> we want to see. The pastor told us, but we want to see. You know how that goes sometimes. <laughs> the Bible said the land of milk and honey, but okay. now, no, it's evidently not that. And so, therefore, doubt came in. Doubt will just ruin, you know, yeah. our relationship with, right. with Christ. And so we want to continue to go on as we see here in, in this narrative. I, I think it's, it's awesome when you look at it. God has said, and then man comes along and says, well, that's not exactly the way it is. But I find that all the time even now. It's not just oh, back in the Old and New Testament. They just didn't want to obey God's word. And uh, now they were going to be put to the test. There's no doubt about it. Now, I just wondered, just throwing out, I think I, just food for thought, at least for me, was all of a sudden we, we can't trust God's leading. But I wonder what really led them to the promised land. Was it not a mm. pillar by, in uh -oh. the day and fire by night? <laughs> That's right. Well, they sure believed that, did they not? That's right. Yeah, they believed that then. But all of a sudden now it's in doubt and said, oh, that must not be. Now they 
refused a, a divine revelation that God was giving. And he gave it in his word. And, uh, you know, it said right now we're going to back up. We just mentioned that just a little while ago about backing up. And this is concerning faith. I think we're going to we'll talk more about that as we go on down here. But just the, the thing, uh, faith. For they said, notice this, they said. So don't say, well, they said on the Sabbath school panel. Notice they said. You know, right back in, in, in numbers here. They said. Uh, uh, basically, it's by their words and their actions. And we walk by sight and not by faith. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds backwards to Scripture, it does. doesn't it? Mm, that's see, right. They say, why? What did they say? We want to see. That's right. Mm -hmm. So they were walking by sight and certainly not by yeah. faith. Hebrews 11 right. said faith is the evidence of things not seen. Mm. <laughs> Interesting here, yeah. And, of course, we know 11, uh, Hebrews 11, 6 says, you know, without faith it's impossible to please God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by what? Faith, faith. and not by, not by sight. sight. That's right. So that tells us. Some people say the big sin. Have you ever heard this? You discuss it with people. They say the big sin of Israel was sending out the spies. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. You know, the big sin was sending out the spies. But if, notice, if the spies had done their duty, if they had been faithful, and yeah. they come back with the correct and the right message in harmony with Scripture, I think maybe, maybe all things would have went well. Mm -hmm. But they did not do uh -huh. that. Yeah, uh -huh. it, 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 interesting, the spies searched for the land how long? 40 days, isn't that right? That's 40, right. Mm -hmm. 40 days, notice the spies searched the land, Numbers 13, 25. Now, it's interesting, that number, I understand that and go pretty deep and you can study some more about that. But it's interesting, the people waited for 40 days when the law was given, you remember? Mm -hmm. That's true. And what happened to them? Now, notice. They got restless. They got restless, mm -hmm. very good. They got restless and restlessness led to rebellion and mm -hmm. making the golden calf. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. but here, they didn't get restless really at all. They just waited to come for the enemy would begin to work and they would come back with the wrong message. Mm -hmm. So they were just kind of like, okay, well, we'll just wait and see what the message and we, 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 we'll listen to that, what they have to say. Now, remember, we're ready to enter into Canaan to occupy it. Now the spies return. Now the message has changed. Let's just give a couple of things real quick. It shows how the enemy became involved quickly. Number one, the land was very fruitful. We read that in verse 27. Right? The land was very fruitful. Right. Number two, they later contradicted themselves by saying in verse 32, it was the land that e eats up the inhabitants thereof. <laughs> All of a sudden they're changing why they took their eyes off of God because they didn't follow what God said in His right. Word. Number yeah. three, we're to take the land, absolutely not. It was impossible. Mm -hmm. Even God said, no, it's possible. Just, just go take it. It's yours. Go take it. They said, no, we can't. And no matter what kind of attempt, what are we going to It's not going to work. Verse 28 it said, oh, the people there are strong. You don't want to fight them. You can't win. Verse 32 and the fourth is that they're of great stature. I mean, they're giants in the land, and we can't conquer it. So why try it? Yeah. You know, why try it? They're a lot bigger than we are. There's more powerful than we are. Putting aside, God had said, it's yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, we do that today sometimes. If God has said it's yours, mm -hmm. we need to conquer it, and we need to go. We're not grasshoppers, right? We're not shaky. And Job said this, I, I thought it was interesting, Job 39, verse 20. He said, canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? <laughs> well, we, they were afraid, they were like grasshoppers. That's right. Israel had these things quickly in favor of, number one. They had this. They had seen God work miracles. That's in their favor. Amen. They witnessed the strong arm of God. They knew it. Example, the Egyptians were much stronger than the Canaanites, but what happened? Yet without a sword drawn or anybody struck with a sword, uh, the chariots and the horsemen were defeated. Mm -hmm. See, they had all these things set out before them too. They had particular promises of victory and success of the Canaanites. And God told Abraham, remember, his seed would possess his, the land. That's they right. had all these things, the promises of God, yet they, would, they wouldn't go take it. Lack of faith. Number four, God said he would drive out the Canaanites before them, Exodus 33, 2. Mm -hmm. hmm. And yet, still yet, they said, what? We are not able. Maybe nice to make it clear as we wrap it up. They were saying, listen, God is not able. God has made the promise, but evidently he's not able to fulfill that promise. God is able to fulfill every promise he's made to mm -hmm. you and to me. And he's promised, number one, I will come again. Let's be ready for that. Amen. 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 <laughs> Great lesson. Okay. <laughs> Wednesday's lesson is an intercessor, and mm -hmm. it begins with... Numbers 14, 11, but since we've yet to cover 1 through 10, let me just oh. kind of give you a little uh, distilled version of what happens in 1 to 10. 
So we've got Israel. They are complaining against oh, the Lord. Lord. They're murmuring against God. And they're saying, oh, if only we had died in yeah. the wilderness. If only we had died in Egypt. You know, I have a friend that every time something bad happens, and she's a Christian, but it's an interesting thing that when something bad happens, mm -hmm. I just want to die. Yeah. I just yeah. want to die. Yeah. And so what they've done is they're saying, oh, wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? And Moses and Aaron fall on their face in front of the congregation. And what happens, Joshua, the son of Nun and Caleb, they're saying, hey, Wait, 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 y'all, back up. This land that we went out to spy on is exceedingly great. If the Lord delights in us, oh, we're, he's going to let us have it. So all the congregation, when the two faithful witnesses stand up, what do they want to do? They want to stone the two faithful witnesses. Mm. Boy, what does that make you think of? People trying to stone the, the faithful witness of the New Te Old Testament in the New right. Testament, right? Numbers 14 and verse 11, God is going to give Moses an opportunity to start over. Numbers 14, 11, Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me mm. and how long will they not believe me with all the signs mm. that I have performed among them my, my. now he says to Moses I got a deal for you Moses I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them mm. and I will make of you a nation that is mightier than they. Mm. This is the second time God has expressed wrath mm. with Israel. Mm -hmm. Remember the first time Moses had already written in the book of the covenant and he built the altar at, this is at Mount Sinai mm. and the people had said, oh yes, all that's in this covenant, mm -hmm. all the Lord has said we will do. Now Moses went up the mountain mm -hmm. For 40 days and God is writing out the Ten Commandments on stone mm. with his own finger. And what happens after the people had been consecrated and the, the new covenant, I mean the old covenant had been ratified? There he's up there, and after God hands him the two tablets of stone, he says, Heads up, Moses, let me tell you what to expect when you get back down to the yeah. camp. The people have rebelled. They had talked Aaron mm -hmm. into making a golden cap. They mm -hmm. broke covenant mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he, he actually had said at that time, Moses, I can wipe them out of mm -hmm. my book and start over with you. And you know what Moses did? He was like a type of Jesus. He was a type mm -hmm. of Jesus. Oh, yeah. And he said to the Lord, Oh, no, Lord, blot me out of your book, not them. Mm -hmm. I mean, Moses interceded for them just right. as Christ intercedes Amen. for us now. So now, coming back to Numbers 14, mm -hmm. let's look at how, what Moses, if, if we don't have time to read it all, but in verses, Numbers 14, 13 through 19, Basically, we see how Moses once again mm -hmm. steps up to intercede for the people. I mean, they're in downright rebellion, not against just his leadership, mm -hmm. but against the Lord. And so he makes a twofold appeal mm -hmm. to God in Moses, uh, in Moses, in Numbers 14, <laughs> 13 through 19. Mm -hmm. First, he appeals to God's reputation and mm -hmm. saying, Lord, if you wipe these people out, Man, the, the heathen nations are going to hear about it and it's just going to ruin your reputation. But then he appeals to the power of God to fulfill his mm. promises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he knew God's glory was at stake. So he appeals to mm. God's loving kindness and the covenant loyalty of his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Numbers 14, 18, let's look at that. What Moses is going to do, he's going to quote God's 
words directly wow. back to him. It's wow. good. And the word does not return void. Mm -hmm. These are the words that when he, mm -hmm. when Moses was hidden in the cleft of the rock because he said, I want to see your glory. Mm -hmm. God hides him in the mm -hmm. cleft of the rock and he walks by. These are the very words. The glory of the Lord is his character. Mm -hmm. So now Moses in Numbers 14, 18, he quotes God's word back to him. And he says, the Lord is long suffering and abundant in yeah. mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third mm -hmm. and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to point out real quickly, we can quote God's promises back to him, but we need to know more than just plucking one scripture mm -hmm. out of context. You need to know what the Word of God says before you can, so you're quoting it back yes. correctly. So here's Moses. He's appealing to God's long suffering, his enduring love. But I just have to say this. When it says that God visits the iniquity of the, of the fathers on the children, don't think that God is punishing the second and third and fourth mm. generation. That is not true. You hear all of this about generational curses. I'm going to tell you, the generational curse is the consequence of the father's sin is passed on to the children. The effects of sin, the patterns of sin. And sometimes the children continue in the same sorts yes. of behavior. And it mm -hmm. takes generations to turn, That's right. turn sure. the tide yes. of <laughs> sinfulness. Amen. Now, in Deut God doesn't make kids suffer because their parents sin. Let me prove that. Deuteronomy 24, 16 mm -hmm. says, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, yes. nor shall the children be put to death for their fathers. A person yes. shall be put to death for his own oh. sin. Yes. Ezekiel 18, 2 through 4. Yes. The Lord asks, what do you mean when you use this proverb consider concerning the land of Israel, saying, the father has eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord, you shall no longer use this proverb mm. in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the sin is mine. And then God says, the soul who sins yes. shall die. That's right. mm -hmm. So we just need to remember, even in a generational curse, you know what? You know what the healing is for that? Repentance is the cure for the right. when, when consequences of sin are passed on. So Moses has this intimate relationship with God. He understands God's character. He knew that the generations could suffer the consequences of sin. And in verse 19, he says to the Lord, pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt mm. even until now. Mm -hmm. And so grace overcomes this rebellion mm -hmm. and this restlessness because of the inter yeah. intercession. But I have to read this. Mm. Numbers 14, 26, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, how long? Shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain mm -hmm. against me? I've heard their complaints that they make against me. And verse 28 says, As I live, says the Lord, mm -hmm. just as you have spoken in my hearing, mm -hmm. so I will do to you. Yes. They kept saying, Oh, wow. we're going to die in the wilderness. Oh, let us die in the wilderness. <laughs> wow. Guess what? God did. Mm. He says, The carcasses of those who complained right. against me and murmured, you're going to die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get to enter into right. the promised mm -hmm. land. Anybody that was 20 and over, they didn't get to enter from that. The, the complaining ones didn't get to enter into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Just know that just as Moses intercedes, Jesus intercedes mm -hmm. for us now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shelly, for setting that up. <laughs>
Thursday's lesson is entitled Faith Versus Presumption. And there's a lot we can learn mm -hmm. from the, the Israelites. There's a lot we can learn from their experience and all that we have read and we have studied up to this point from, uh, from Numbers chapter 11 all the way through to now we're in mm -hmm. chapter 14. And we're going to get into the latter verses of the response of the people to God after He has clearly told them, well. you're not going into this land of milk and honey. You're not going to inherit this, this land anymore. And so, uh, but there's a lot we can learn from this. And this is what actually Paul uh, testifies to in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. So let's go there first, just to kind of set the groundwork for what we're going to be studying in just a few moments. But 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 11, notice what the Bible says. Uh, Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, mm -hmm. all passed through the sea, mm -hmm. all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. This is what we were talking about. They didn't get to inherit the land because they died in the wilderness. But it goes on to say in verse 6, again, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6. Now these things became our examples mm -hmm. to the intent that we should not lust after the evil things as they also lusted and do not become idolaters as were some of them as it was written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Yeah. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ mm -hmm. as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents, nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. And in verse 11, now all these, this is our memory verse. Yeah. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age have come. So when we read these stories and we read what is happening, there's some lessons we can learn here. And one of those lessons is that, and this is, this is the big one here, especially for Thursday's lesson. There's a lot that we need to learn and comprehend about the difference between faith and presumption. Yeah. Because a lot of times we assume what we think is God's favor. We assume what we think is God's favor upon our life or His plan upon our life. And we will take advantage of the grace of God or the love of God or the mercy of God and often end up making decisions that was not a thus say the Lord. Uh -huh. And so I love what the, the lesson brings out. I'm going to read just a portion here of what the lesson says on Thursday. It says, throughout history, God's people have been roaming in the wilderness as they seek the promised land. Yes. This wilderness has many faces. Right now, it looks like an endless media barrage. The constant beeps of incoming messages and the deep roar of inter, uh, interminable entertainment. It tries to sell us pornography as love and materialism mm -hmm. as the answer to our problems. Mm -hmm. If we just could be a bit fitter, right? A bit younger, a wow. bit more affluent, a bit sexier, <laughs> that would take care of all of our problems. Mm. And it says, like the Israelites, we are restless in our search for peace. That's good. And often, and so often, we look for it in the wrong place places. Yes. Now let's go into the latter verses mm. back to Romans chapter 14 because God has just told them you're not going into the land. Moses brings the message to the people. And this no, is, I'm sorry, did I say Romans? I meant mm -hmm. to say Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter 14, not Romans 14. <laughs> Romans, excuse me, now I'm going to say it again. Numbers, <laughs> Numbers, <laughs> Numbers chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at verses 39 through 45. And so now this is the people's response to what God has already spoken. And so notice what it says there beginning in verse 39 of Numbers chapter 14. It says, Then Moses mm -hmm. told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose early in the morning and went up to the top of the mountain saying, Here we are, and, 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 and we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. Now it's interesting, if you kind of take all this in, the response is, Lord, we know what you just said, uh -huh. and we know what you've told us, but we're going to go ahead and go anyways. Look, look, yeah. we, you know, almost like sin uh -oh. is an oops, like, oops, I messed up. Okay, I've sinned, Lord. Okay, but you're a gracious God, and you're a loving God. We're going to go ahead into that land that you told us that we're not going to go into. Oh. And then notice what Moses says in response to that. Uh -oh. We're in verse 41, mm -hmm. and Moses says, Now why do you transgress yeah. the command of the Lord? Mm -hmm. For this will not succeed. 
Do not go up lest you be defeated by your enemies, yeah. for the Lord is not among you. Wow. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword mm. because you have turned away from the Lord, and the Lord will not be with you. Moses is basically saying to them, what in the world are you, did you not just hear what the Lord just told you? Uh -huh. yeah. Do you, and, and really what this comes down to, and we're going to get into this in just a moment and the closing moments we have and in, in, in further defining presumption. Often presumption comes with an arrogant misapplication yeah. and, and misinterpretation and not trusting the word of the Lord and mm. assuming what God wants when really he doesn't. And that's what's happening here. The people are just, yeah, we know what God says, but you know, we're going to do it anyways because that's mm. the land he promised us, right? Yeah. And Moses says, don't do it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Notice verse 44, it says, but they presumed, there it is, yes. to go up to the mountaintop. Nevertheless, neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed from the camp. Yeah. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that mountain came down and attacked them and drove them back as far as Hamora. And what we find here is a, a wonderful example of when you, when you presume that you know what, what, what's best for you than what God does, and you cast aside a thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. guess what? You are, you are now forsaking the command of God. Notice how the ark stayed behind. That yeah. is a symbol of the fact that they were going up and they're saying, we don't need God's word. We don't need God's commands. We know what God has said, but we're going to do it anyways. And also notice, they left behind the person whom God had spoke to, whom was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They left behind their prophet. In other words, you know, we, we know what the prophet says. We know that God told this, this brother you yeah. know, what, our, what our path is going to be, but we're going to do it anyways. Mm. My friends, this is a perfect example of how we should know the difference between faith and presumption. These people weren't acting on faith. They were acting on presumption. Good. And here's the difference. I, I just kind of created this, and feel free if anybody wants mm. to chime in in the last couple of moments here. Uh, faith, okay, faith is hope and trust that comes in harmony with the truth of God's word. If I have faith for something, I have a hope, I have a trust so deep, but it's grounded, it's based on the word of God, the yeah. truth as found in God's word. Yeah. I'm not going to say, oh, I have faith that, you know, God's going to still heal me after I, you know, eat this whole pig that I'm craving. Right. You know, I'm, I, I know that's kind of weird, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, my friends, it, it, it's just yeah. insane to know that that's not in harmony with God's word. That's presumption. That's, <laughs> that's not right. faith. Presumption. Again, this is a, often a selfish assumption that often is accompanied by an arrogant, haughty spirit mm -hmm. that brings about a misuse and abuse of God's character, God's grace, and God's mercy, which is what we see happening right here. Mm -hmm. I heard a story one time of a, actually, this is a true story mm -hmm. of a very popular televangelist. I'm not going to mention his name, yeah. but uh, this is before he had bought all of his, you know, multi-million dollar planes for ministry and all this stuff. And uh, he was on a plane one day with a bunch of just, you know, People traveling from one, one country to the next, well, they get up 37, 38,000 feet in the air and they start experiencing some very heavy turbulence. Well. And the lady sitting next to this popular televangelist just starts screaming, ah, you know, losing yeah. her mind, screaming. And he turned to this lady, he said, woman, be quiet. And she, and she was caught, caught back mm -hmm. by it. And he said, look, this plane ain't going down. You know why? Because I'm on it. Uh-oh, wow. look out now. Now, was that faith? I don't know that that was faith. I think that's more of a presumption. That's, a, that's an yes. arrogant, haughty spirit. This, is all, this plane isn't going down because I'm on it. You know, we're talking about, again, the difference between faith yes. and presumption. Here's another example. You know what? Um, God, He's my heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, He loves me. God loves me. And He wants me to be happy. And therefore, if I want that car that I can't afford, mm -hmm. God's going to let me have it because, you know, He wants me to be happy and He's a gracious God. Mm -hmm. That's presumption. That's not, it's not necessarily God's plan for you to have what you want in your life at all times yeah. just because God wants you to be happy and He loves you. <laughs> that, again, is not faith. That's presumption. Uh -huh. Oh, here's a big one. Uh, God uh, may have been strict in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we're under a system of grace. Wow. Therefore, we are not under the bondage to worry about keeping every law perfectly, especially those dealing with detailed observances of certain days. Ooh. For instance, you know what? God knows my heart and He loves me, yeah. and certainly He's not going to burn me in hell for all ceaseless ages because, you know, I didn't keep Saturday holy. Well. 
Is that faith or is that presumption? That's presumption because the Word of God says that God has a day. It's His day, the Sabbath day. Yeah. These are just examples. My friends, make sure that we are in the right mindset, that we're tapped in to the mind of Christ, that we have the faith of Jesus Christ, the mind of Jesus, to be able to know that when we are exercising faith and when we are being presumptuous, in this case, make sure that we're exercising faith in the Word of the Lord, that if God has spoken, God has spoken. There's nothing else to add to it. And if we have something in our own heart and mind that is against the Word of God, then we need to examine ourselves and say, Lord, create in me no. a clean heart, O oh God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Y'all are on fire. Praise the Lord. What an incredible okay. study. I want to give each one of you a moment to share something about your day or this week. We'll start with Pastor John. Because attitudes are contagious, ask and pray every day for the fruit of the Spirit to be in your life. Mm. Allow people to come into your sphere. As I was told once, Ellen White says that when people come into your presence, they should leave more encouraged than when they came. Mm. Pray for yeah. the Spirit that you have to be contagious in uplifting Christ. Amen. You know, I Israel had plenty of difficulties. As we go through this life, we're going to have a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. But today, I tell you, if, in, if you have exercising a living, active faith, as we talked about here in Jesus Christ, these things will vanish away into yeah. nothingness That's right. because the Bible said all things are possible through Him. Mm. Mm. I just think of Moses as the mediator of the old covenant, uh, the intercessor for the mm. people. And you know, the Bible says that we have one mediator now between yes, us and God, and good. that is the man Christ Jesus. And mm. in Hebrews 7, 25, it says that he is able to save to mm. the uttermost those mm. who come to God through him because he lives to make intercession yeah. for us. Mm, amen. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If God said it, <laughs> believe it. Yeah. Don't go against it because we need to have that mentality, that mind of Jesus. As Jesus yeah. said in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. If only the children of Israel had had that mindset and just said, look, God has spoken, we wouldn't, they wouldn't have been and fallen into the peril and, the, and the, the horrible situation that they did. So trust in the Lord and trust in His Word. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much, Pastor Ryan, Sister Shelley, Pastor Kenny, and Pastor John. Love studying the Word of God with each one of you. I was reminded as they were all talking of Romans 15. It says, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And what a privilege and blessing. We can look at the Israelites and say, why did they do that? But then we can look at our own lives and examine yeah, our right. own <laughs> lives and see those places where maybe we murmured yeah, or we complained sure. or we lusted after Egypt. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be restless. We don't have to be rebellious because Isaiah 57, 19, I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says the Lord. And then mm -hmm. it goes on with the restlessness of the wicked. We don't have to wander in that. We can have peace in Jesus. Join us next week, Roots of Restlessness. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're just getting started with a series entitled Rest in Christ. I know you'll be blessed because we need that rest in our lives today. Our topic today, Restless and Rebellious. You say, Derek, that sounds negative. We'll learn some lessons from God's people through the ages that will help us realize how much we need rest in Christ. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to the team. This is going to be a great series, isn't it? Yes. And you'll notice if you're watching, we've just got five. We call that our Gideon's Band but because of the restrictions. But we're excited that we're adding some remote team members. We've got Shana from Maine. Shana, it's great to have you with us for Hope Sabbath School today. We have Addison from British Columbia and Canada. Addison, we're glad you're with us. And we've got Puya all the way from Hawaii. Puya, glad to have you with us too. And it's so exciting to see 
how in this difficult time, God is working all things for good. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we're just really excited that we can study the Word of God together today. Well, before we pray, I just want to speak to our Hope Sabbath School family. If you enjoyed that song from Matthew 11, 28 to 30, we would like to not only send you a copy, but 11 other scripture songs. It's a special gift during this series on Rest in Christ. And all you have to do to get those 12 scripture songs is go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, and you'll find a button that says, Get Free Gift. <laughs> if you push that button, Get Free Gift, you'll get a link to be able to download not only this theme song, but 11 other beautiful scripture songs so you can hide God's word in your heart. Mm -hmm. I hope you take advantage of that gift from Hope Sabbath School. Let's pray together now. Father in heaven, we're thankful for that beautiful word of Jesus. Come to me and you will find rest for your souls. And as we study today about restless and rebellious, uh, even though it's a challenging topic, may we look beyond these uh, difficult lessons and see the rest in Christ that will bless our souls. Be with each Hope Sabbath School member around the world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to start in Numbers chapter 11, and I'm just so excited each one of us can be here. I'm going to ask Shana, who's up there in Maine, one of our remote team members. Shana, could you begin our study today reading from Numbers chapter 11? And verse 1. Sure, and I'll be reading from the King James Version, Numbers 11, verse 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Now, that's a very troubling verse. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, that's why we need to read the whole counsel of God because we read about a God who loves with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Mm -hmm. uh, what had God done for this people, and why were they so restless and complaining? Well, let's talk about what he'd done for them first. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, Brittany. Well, he delivered them from slavery in Egypt by a mighty, miraculous, several uh, plagues that were brought and signs, and then he brought them through the Red Sea and destroyed their enemies, and then he's even been providing food for them on a daily basis, showing them he's taking care of everything. He even provided a pillar of cloud to shelter them from the sun in the day and a pillar of fire at night so they could find their way. So he's provided in every way um, for their every need. Yeah. So why are they complaining? Sabina, what do you think? They are complaining because they don't have the same type of food that they used to have in Egypt, for instance. <laughs> so maybe that, uh, yeah. Puya, all the way there in Hawaii, maybe that's just a symptom of a deeper problem. Help us out with that, Puya. Mm -hmm. Why are they complaining, even though, like Brittany said, they, they've got so much? Right. I, I believe this is human nature. When, when we have problems, um, many problems in our lives we bottle up our problems and emotion deep inside and when we are faced with a situation that we're sensitive about that would serve as a detonator of the the underlying deeper issue and here in the case of the israelites it seemed that the deeper underlying issue is they are rebelling against god's leading mm -hmm. god's leading in their lives and so this this complaint about the food and what them wanting to eat meat is just a symptom of the underlying, the deeper underlying issue. Because uh, if, if, if we look back the past, in, in their past, uh, it seemed that they are very selective in their memory. Because <laughs> even though they could have eaten uh, meat in Egypt, but they were suffering. So they, they had a selective memory in that they only remember some portions of probably a few portions of their experience in Egypt and compared them to where God is leading them. Sure, and I think it's a good point. Just think of it even in a family. If, if a spouse is yelling at the spouse because the menu for dinner is not right, that's, that's not the real problem, is no. it? There's a relationship yeah. problem. Yes. And I think, yeah. uh, Puyi, you made a good point. There's a relationship problem here. They're disconnected from oh. God. Yes. They're rebelling. Mm. Sabina, if you could continue reading in verses 2 through 6 of sure. Numbers 11. Let's mm -hmm. see how the children of Israel react. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, 
Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Well, I'm hearing Puya's words talk about a euphoric recall, selective recall. <laughs> I don't know if they ever ate the melons and the cucumbers. Maybe some of the mixed multitude That's a did, good question. but they were all slaves. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they they probably mm. were happy to have anything mm. to eat. Uh, but there's this rebellious and restless spirit. Now, mm -hmm. before we unpack a little more of the restlessness of the children of Israel, Harold, why record a story like that in the Bible? Doesn't it say in, in I think in Romans 15, that these stories are written for our learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why record mm. such a negative, restless attitude mm. uh, here in Numbers 11? Well, it's to actually remind us of what we can become when we do not depend on God. We, when we do not rest mm -hmm. in God mm -hmm. and trust in Him because God knows mm -hmm. that we are sinful and we need to be reminded that we have a tendency to sin, we have a tendency to rebel, yeah. and we see like what the consequences are. But at the same time, we get to see God's mercy. Mm -hmm. Even though we, we do see something unfortunate, mm. I mean, in the end, we, we see God's plan. Actually, His goal is to save us. Mm. Yeah, let's take a look, uh, Jason, if you could go to Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. But you know, that you make a really good point. We look and we say, wow, that's how I could act if I'm not connected. Maybe someone's watching mm -hmm. Hope Sabbath School as a family and someone's elbowing the person next to them like, but actually don't elbow anybody. Just think about how I could act yeah. if I'm not really mm -hmm. connected and resting in Christ, right? Amen. Jason, uh, what does that text say in Romans 15 and verse 4? All right, so I'll be reading Romans, the 15th chapter and 4th verse, and the Bible says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to that story and, and this uh, or maybe almost fanciful recall about how good it was before they allowed God to deliver them. Is it possible even today that, that either ungodly friends or maybe the kingdom of darkness could deceive you into thinking that things were better before you decided to surrender your life to God? Mm. What do you think, Sabina? Yeah, I think so. I think it's very much possible. And I think that even if there is not those bad of a friends, even ourselves, you can catch, you know, especially in a moment in which we are traversing challenges, which is what was happening to them, right? Uh, it's, it's okay. They were going through a problem yet God was providing enough for that in that moment pro and promising for them much more than what was already being given. And they were not satisfied with that, with the word of God given to them in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I think it is possible, Pastor Derek, that we sometimes, especially when we cross valleys in life, that we may forget what God has done for us before or what He's doing in the moment, even if it feels insufficient. But we need to remember that He's enough for us, and His grace is enough for us, right? Mm -hmm. I think if we just take one point, and I'll come to you, Addison. I see your hand raised there in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, that it's very easy when we disconnect to become restless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could always mm -hmm. find something to complain about. Mm -hmm. But there's some lessons we've learned from Romans 15 that we could learn. Yes, Addison. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really good point about disconnecting from God. And uh, I just thought of... In this life, in this 24-7 society, it's easy. It's easy for us to, to take on some type of temporary security, distrust God, and sacrifice the freedom and security that we have in Jesus for something that is superficial, something that we think is more beneficial, especially when we're looking at it with a selective memory. Thank you for pointing that out. We're going to go to another incident, just the next chapter over in Numbers chapter 12 where there's some more restlessness. Brittany, if you could read the first three verses for us. Um, this is a troubling picture. Let's, let's see what the Bible records. Numbers 12, verses 1 to 3. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Then Miriam and Aaron 
spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who are on the face of the earth. Mm. So, Shana, what's the problem here? <laughs> he's just got married to, to Zipporah, I think her name is, right? She's from Ethiopia. Um, what, what are Miriam and Aaron talking about? Well, first of all, she's from another country, so they may have had a problem with her nationality. Um, and I'm sensing some kind of pride in Miriam and Aaron because they're like, oh, well, didn't God speak to us too? Um, so yeah, there's there's some sense of pride and I don't know racism, jealousy. I'm not sure. You know, uh, we noticed earlier that there may be a kind of a presenting issue, but it's not the deeper problem. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it could be. Let's just stay with the surface issue. He married someone who wasn't part of their ethnic group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How how. What, how are you going to respond to that? I mean, we deal with racism today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was the daughter of Jethro, Jethro who was a priest of yep. the Most High God, mm -hmm. right. who gave godly counsel to Moses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, right. Mm -hmm. what is the deeper problem than just being critical about who mm -hmm. he married, Gladys? I think that they had a problem with Moses. You know, sometimes when we want, when we criticize, is we want to level the ground with other people. So I think they felt mm -hmm. like, oh, Moses is this high up guy, but yet he married this woman, right. mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. didn't God speak through us too? Kind of like leveling the ground between Moses and themselves. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to make sure that Moses didn't feel like he was higher or mightier than them. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And Sabina. And also yeah. having a sense of superiority above other, you know, nations, and in this case, the Ethiopian woman. So, uh, it clearly was a lack of humbleness and sense of who they were also in Christ. You know, we think about being prejudiced against other nations. I'm yeah. thinking um, even Ethiopia, you find an Ethiopian in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, and he's also seeking God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, just having a racist attitude towards someone because they're not from your group, mm -hmm. that in itself is, is a big problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's a deeper issue too. Mm -hmm. Brittany? I was just going to say, it reminds me of what happened in heaven originally, mm -hmm. where we have Satan, who was Lucifer, and he wasn't content with the position God had given him. He mm -hmm. wanted to be God, and he started a rebellion. And we see the same spirit in Moses and Aaron, that they aren't content with the positions God has given them, and they're trying to get the position that God gave to Moses. And we see the same mm -hmm. discontentment that leads to rebellion in them. Well, yeah. let's see how the story unfolds and what yeah. lessons we might learn from it. Uh, if, Harold, you could read on for us in Numbers 12, beginning with verse 4, down through verse 10. Um, the Lord responds to this attitude. The presenting issue is kind of a racist attitude, but a deeper attitude of rebellion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house, I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow, then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was, 
a leper. Now there's so much in that passage, uh, whether you're uh, mm -hmm. our remote team members around the different parts of the world, maybe you can be thinking, what, what, uh, why is this scripture recorded? You've got some important mm -hmm. revelation from the Lord and then this severe judgment mm -hmm. on Miriam. Anybody, what do you think? Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the lesson here? Brittany? Well, I think the leprosy was just to show what was going on in the heart. We can't see necessarily the sin that's going on in someone's thoughts and in their heart, but God is exposing that and saying, look, what, what you're harboring in your heart, it's leading to this disease. Sin is, is causing something greater in you that is going to cause sickness and, and death if we allow it to run its course. Mm -hmm. Addison, you want to add mm -hmm. to that? You know, one plague that has spanned the course of history for nearly 6,000 years is the plague of sin. And here is another illustration of God saying, okay, the, he's saying jealousy, ambition of this form, it's, it's, it's vice. And he wants to give an example and say, okay, I am going to, um, there is still mercy in this story because God is long suffering. But he ultimately, he wants them, he wants to stop this plague, stop this plague from spreading in their own life. Mm -hmm. Hui, I saw your hand raised mm -hmm. there in Hawaii. Right. Um, it is also interesting to note that it seemed that Miriam received a harsher uh, punishment than Aaron. And probably could be that Miriam was the instigator of this attack on Moses. And I believe one of the dangers of leaders attacking other leader, leaders is that it could spread quickly among the other members of the, the group. And so God had to take uh, immediate action. Mm. Let's see how Aaron responds because uh, Puy is ex absolutely right. Uh, they don't both get leprosy. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting that it says Miriam and Aaron complained. Miriam's name is listed first. first. Mm -hmm. But uh, Let's see, Gladys, in verses 11 and 12 of Numbers chapter 12, how Aaron responds when he sees that his sister has become a leper. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, please don't punish us for this sin we have so foolishly committed. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby already decay at birth. Mm. Now, it's interesting, uh, he's talking like Moses brought the judgment. Mm. Was that, mm. is, that, is that correct? No. 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 Well, the judgment no. came from the Lord, but I think the point was well made mm. that the Lord could have struck her down, dead. No. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the leprosy could have lasted her whole life, right. neither of which is true, right? Mm. But there was a very s visible reminder of as you mm -hmm. pointed out, Brittany, a sinful or rebellious attitude on the inside. Yeah. Uh, what can you learn from Aaron's response um, in, in pleading with his brother? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Sabina? It sounds like he had the spy gods already, uh, you know, speaking to them and already get, giving that sign in rebuttal that still he had not understood the matter, what was going on in their hearts, because in bringing that as we are saying back to Moses and punishing Moses, his mindset is that like, oh, it's still, it's Moses the one who is causing all this problem. Moses is the one who took the Ethiopian lady in marriage, and now Moses is the one who is causing us to suffer this way. Ah, this rather thing. than repenting and the, saying, exactly, I've yes. sinned against the Lord. So, mm -hmm. so he's trying to get help, but he's really not thinking that clearly himself not either, at is all. he? Mm -mm. Good point, Gladys. Well, I see it a little bit differently. Like um, here on the verses that were read before, is it, but not with my Moses, my servant Moses, uh, he is the one I trust, my version says. Sure. So I think that at that moment when, when Aaron saw what happened to, to his sister Miriam, he saw Moses like, you are the one who's closer to God, you know, intercede mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't take it so personal that just be, you know, an intercessor for us before God. Okay, so not, not that you can solve the problem, but right. that you can, you, the Lord has said that you talk mm -hmm. with him face to face. Exactly. And so be, mm -hmm. be an intercessor for us. So yeah. we've got a situation here. Moses has a choice to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. He could have the same critical spirit mm -hmm. and criticize them back. What could he say? Oh, you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you deserve, deserve it. You got what yeah. you deserve. Yeah. 
uh, or he can intercede. Yeah. He can pray yeah. to God uh, mm. for them. Why <laughs> is intercession always the best option? Uh, Addison, over there in British mm. Columbia, and then Puya. Why is intercession? Maybe someone has done something foolish. You say, well, they did something foolish. They deserve it. Why is mm. intercession or praying for them always better than criticizing them? Well, Jesus set a perfect example of what it means to intercede for others. Even on the cross, he prayed for his enemies, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And so even when we're talking about other people who have um, disowned us or have done something wrong, uh, we need to lift them up in prayer and um, allow God to work a miracle in their life because the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Mm. And, Quoting from um, uh, James 5, verse 16, that's right. 17, somewhere in there, the mm. prayer of a righteous person. I believe that that's when we pray in Jesus' name, by the way, because mm -hmm. there's nobody righteous, right? Mm -hmm. Except when we come in His mm -hmm. name. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this whole, this whole topic of intercession, Pui, I saw your hand raised there in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, why is intercession, praying for someone or for your leaders, always better than criticism? As someone has stated um, that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Mm. So criticism alone, information alone does not change people's heart. Mm. What changes people's heart, hearts is that uh, when we see kindness, when we see understanding, when we see forgiveness, uh, it, it actually motivates us to to be transformed. Yeah. So I believe intercession for others is more effective in the long run than criticism. Because when we criticize someone or when we are being criticized, our first uh, human response, natural response is to, uh, to, to not accept that criticism. And, and we tend to isolate ourselves from the people who are criticizing us. And, and, and so in the end, uh, until we know that people care, or that someone cares about me, uh, do, do we uh, actually uh, plan to change? And so intercession is always more effective than mere criticism. I think Jesus, as Addison pointed out, really modeled that, didn't he? Well, mm -hmm. we're going to have to hold some of the comments as we move on in our study because someone might be watching Hope Sabbath School today and say, well, why, why, why are you worried about my restlessness? You know, this is just my life. But the problem we're going to discover is that restlessness, which is a symptom of being disconnected from rest in Christ, mm -hmm. restlessness leads to rebellion. Mm -hmm. And rebellion mm -hmm. can be deadly. Yeah. So we're going to look together, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask Jason if you would read for us Numbers chapter 13. We're, we're moving way in this book of Numbers, and we've seen them complaining about the menu, right? They want some other food, <laughs> mm -hmm. forgetting all of God's blessings. We see some leaders complaining against other leaders. Mm -hmm. This restless spirit, which is an evidence of not being connected to God, not resting in mm -hmm. God, can lead to rebellion. Read for us Numbers 13, verses 27 to 33. Yeah, my pleasure. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Numbers, the 13th chapter, 27 verse through the 30, uh, third verse. And the Bible says, Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are, f are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Verse 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountain, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with them said, We are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we verse 32 and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying the land 
through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people we whom we saw in it are men of great stature in verse 33 there we saw the giants the descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight now as you're watching that there's kind of a crescendo happening what what's happening it's kind of a strange change of story what what lesson could we learn What's happening, Brittany? Mm. Well, something that I see happening is that they forgot or they didn't believe the promise that God had given them. Because if we look at the very beginning of the chapter, in chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, we see that God said, I'm giving you this land. Mm -hmm. Go spend, spy out the land that I am giving you. Mm -hmm. But now they're saying, we can't overcome them. They're too great for us. So they've forgotten the one who's giving them the land. They think that they have to do it in their own strength. Mm -hmm. And it starts out, the report starts out saying it's truly a goodly land flowing with milk and honey, and it ends up saying the land devours people. Yeah. <laughs> Something's yeah. happened in their brains exactly. because of their disconnection mm -hmm. from God. Let's yeah. see how, mm -hmm. Huya, let me take your point, and then let's go to uh, chapter 14 and see how this bad report mm -hmm. impacts the rest of the children of Israel. Huya? Yes, uh, when we are restless at heart, we struggle to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is exactly what we see in the lives of these uh, 10 spices, because they did not rest in God, in their heart, mm -hmm. uh, which again is the real uh, cause, the real issue here. It leads to the, the symptoms of uh, not being able to trust God. So, um, even when we talk about physical rest, when we don't get enough rest, uh, when we don't have enough sleep, it, it leads us to making bad choices, bad decisions, bad health lifestyles, which leads to problems and bad judgment in our day-to-day -day lives. So now if, if we look at our spiritual lives, how much more do we need to rest in God in order to be able to walk by faith and trust God when things are difficult. Mm -hmm. Absolutely so. Yeah. Shana, if you could keep reading for us in chapter 14, verses 1 to 4, it, it's almost like in their disconnection, their restlessness has turned to rebellion, mm -hmm. that they're now actually being used to turn the whole people mm -hmm. away from God. How yeah. does the Bible read in Numbers 14, 1 to 4? And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Mm. Mm. They're going back to slavery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've been set free and they're saying, Horrible. let's go back to slavery. How did Moses and Aaron respond? Mm -mm. Do you know? Because they fall down fell on their faces before. They fell they down, down on their, their faces. faces. Yeah. Now, uh, are they uh, are they <laughs> falling down to worship these people who are saying, "Let's go no, back"? Not at all. No. They're, they're falling down before the Lord yes. and saying, "Lord, we don't know what to do." Yeah. And now a young man speaks up. Gladys, if you could read, uh, I'll call him young, relatively young compared to Moses, uh, in Numbers chapter fourteen. Verses 6 through 9. Verses 6 through 9. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, The land we traveled through and explore is a wonderful land. And if the land the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into the land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. 
They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. I just want to say hallelujah. 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 And the next Amen. verse says, Amen. and the people repented no. and entered no. in. <laughs> we would hope, but yes. Brittany, you're shaking your head. Mm -hmm. Does it startle you? Would you read verse 10 of no. Numbers 14? Does it startle you mm -hmm. that restlessness can lead to rebellion, can even lead to violence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. No wonder God mm -hmm. wants to give us rest for our souls, rest mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could end up going down a very destructive path. Mm -hmm. How did the children mm -hmm. of Israel respond to to the testimony of Joshua and Caleb. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Numbers chapter 14 and verse 10 says, And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Here's the grace of God in action. Why didn't jo uh, Joshua and Caleb die that day? God, God intervened. Because Supernatural God intervention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what did yeah. God, God do to yeah. distract them from stoning these two faithful witnesses? He immediately comes into scene and is going to, is challenging them, saying, I'm going to, you know, hit you with pestilence. And it, it, it's almost yeah. like, um, of course, mm -hmm. God's presence was there through the Shekinah glory, but it's almost like God creates a diversion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the glory of the Lord, right. boom! Yeah. Uh, like, uh, okay, you need to pay attention to me now. Right, right. But, yeah. do you see a troubling, Puya, I see your hand raised. Is it possible even today we could get so disconnected mm -hmm. that our restlessness leads to rebellion, even to open violence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe so. Uh, if, even today, I believe if we are not resting in God, if we're not resting in Christ, even after God has set us free from the bondage of, not of Egypt, but the bondage of sin and the slavery of sin, if, if we are not in that uh, relationship with God, if we're not resting in Christ Jesus, the tendency is that we, we remember the past um, and, and sometimes it's easy to remember the past in, uh, as a better experience more than it actually was. And uh, we are uh, tempted to go back into our old sinful ways, which is why Paul warns uh, the Christians time and again in the New Testament, where he said, stand firm in the freedom that Christ has set you free. Do not go back to the yoke of sin and slavery. And so here it's interesting that they, they were even suggesting to go back to the slavery of Egypt than to continue to trust in God mm -hmm. because of their restlessness. So the same thing can happen to us today if we're not resting in Christ and his righteousness that we would be tempted to go back to the slavery of sin all over again. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see yeah. that this has touched a, a response. I've got several hands that are raised here. Mm -hmm. um, we could see ourselves in a similar situation. Uh, this story is a warning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that rest in Christ is not just a kind of a, an optional extra. Mm. It is essential yes, for our salvation. Yeah. Uh, Addison, I see your hand raised. Yeah, just to add on to what Puya was saying, and I thought that was beautifully put, but over and over again throughout the Bible, there's just copious examples. You can go to the book of Psalms time and time again. The psalmist learning firsthand from his own experiences, facing his enemies, uh, fleeing from Saul. Um, time and time again, he's learning the importance of, I'm going to exchange my fear for faith and rest in Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. That is the theme throughout the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, and that is what we can do today. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Exchange my fear or my restlessness mm -hmm. for rest mm -hmm. in Christ. Can you think of some examples, and then I want to go and end with a positive note of intercession. Can you think of some other examples in the scripture? I'm not going to read text, just share a story where restlessness led to rebellion that even mm -hmm. led to uh, violence. And we see how dangerous a restless spirit is. Mm -hmm. Sabina? Pastor Derek, for me, the most shocking one is the crucifixion of Jesus himself. 
religious know, leaders. Religious leaders, people who had scriptures in their face, just like the people of uh, the Hebrew people had here in the desert. They had truth for them. God had already spoken to them about that, but they were not able, because of their critical hearts, the restless heart, they were not able to see truth in front of them. And, uh, you know, just like these people here in the book of Numbers, we know they are not going to enter Canaan eventually. Also, the same happens that these prophets at the time of Jesus, who were, you know, just the leaders in the time, these religious people, they ended up not experiencing the blessing that God had to them through the Messiah. So that's really uh, terrible to think of, right? You know, that really is the most vivid example, and I'm going to leave that one as an example for all of us to say that religious people could kill the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we do not want to have that restless uh, experience. We want to mm -hmm. rest in Christ. But I want to move on, Harold, if you could read for us in Numbers 14, verses 11 through 19. Again, we see Moses. Mm -hmm. You know, Moses was not perfect, right? He killed an Egyptian, mm -hmm. uh, kind of took things to, into his own hands. Later, he'll make other mistakes. He's not perfect. But here we see the heart of God mm -hmm. when he, he intercedes for his people. Would you read for us Numbers 14, verses 11 through 19? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them? I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it, for by your might you brought these people up from among them. Mm -hmm. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, that you, Lord, seen face to face and your cloud stands above them and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night now if you kill these people as one man then the nations which have heard of your fame will speak saying because the Lord was not able to bring this people to the land which he swore to give them therefore he killed them in the wilderness and now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Now, I want you to notice the next verse, and then I have a very important question for you. Brittany, if you could just read uh, just a short verse, verse 20 of Numbers 14. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. So here's the question. <laughs> Did Moses say some important things when he was pleading with the Lord? Yes. yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. God, you're long-suffering, you're merciful. Did he change the Lord's mind by pleading or interceding on behalf of his people? Gladys. He didn't change God's mind because he quoted God's words word. back to him. So he said, you have to be faithful to your word, what you have said to me. So I imagine... Um, Maybe I'm using my sanctified imagination, but I imagine the Lord smiling yeah. as Moses saying, Lord, remember who you are. Yes. yes. <laughs> because a, an earthly ruler could have responded by just, mm -hmm. you know, that was yeah. the human response, yeah. right? Just start with you. Yeah. No, Lord, you know how you are. Yeah. It doesn't change the character of the Lord, does mm -hmm. it? But what a beautiful mm -hmm. testimony where Moses is reminding the Lord yeah. How do you see that intercession, that revelation of the character of God, mm. kind of as a, a foretaste of the, of the ministry of Jesus? Mm -hmm. It's almost mm -hmm. as if, mm. if you could look forward, yeah. Huya, if you could look forward and see how Jesus revealed the character of the Father, yeah. 
we were catching a little glimpse of that. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think, Puya, in, in the action of Moses here? Yes, we, we do. We, we do indeed. Moses interceded on behalf of the people to God. And in the same way, when we uh, read Hebrews, uh, we are told that Jesus is interceding on our behalf and God is uh, uh, accepting the intercession of Jesus on our behalf. And so before God, our sins are forgiven through Jesus, just as God forgave uh, the sins of the, the rebellion of the people of Israel through the intercession of Moses. And so Jesus indeed was um, foreshadowed uh, from the story of Moses here. Shana, I see your hand raised there in Maine. It's a beautiful picture, even though Moses is far from perfect. He said, God, I know your character. I know what you're like. Shana? Right. And it also foreshadows the type of love that Jesus came and showed us. Um, Moses could have asked God to take his siblings out, um, but he didn't. He, he pleaded with God to spare them and instead and jesus did the same thing when he came here on earth um lived life as a human um as our elder brother and died and intercedes on our behalf as puya mentioned um that hebrews mentions that he intercedes now in heaven for us and so it yeah it really shows love or that love that that jesus came and showed as well Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, let me just reinforce one important point, and that is Jesus doesn't change the Father's heart either. Mm -hmm. God loves the world, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God is not stern and wanting retribution and somehow yeah. Jesus changes his heart. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but he is a revelation, he says, if you've seen me, mm -hmm. you've seen the Father. And mm -hmm. what a beautiful revelation that is. Yeah. Now, tragically, mm -hmm. having rebelled, and even become quite violent to be wanting to stone Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. Now the children of Israel say, well, we're going to go take the land, but we'll do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and what's, mm -hmm. what's the outcome? Maybe we should look at that one text together in Numbers chapter 14. Mm -hmm. And uh, Addison, if you could read that for us, Numbers 14, beginning with verse 39. How does that read in your Bible? Reading from the King James Version. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning, and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up. For the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. Yeah. So, question for you. Why didn't Moses say, well, okay, we'll go with you? Why didn't he do that, Brittany? Well, it, was, it was directly against what God had said. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. he knew God wasn't going to be with them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. disobedience in order to try to accomplish something good never works, no. mm -hmm. no, right? Mm -hmm. Their restlessness, even in supposedly doing what God had asked them to do previously, mm -hmm. it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. What are the lessons from this story? Let me take a few minutes with us here now. We hear God appealing to us to rest in Christ. Mm -hmm. to let his presence abide with us and, and to guide us by his spirit just as he did with the cloud and the fire. Mm -hmm. what, what's the most important lesson, Sabina, that you get from our study? Today? Yeah, Pastor Derek, I think that for me a great lesson from this story is that, you know, when you have this spirit of criticism and restlessness, it will cloud your vision mm -hmm. of everything around you. So it leads to lack of vision, and God has given us a vision about what's, what are the things coming and where should we be standing. 
And if we have this criticism and lack of vision that is caused by restlessness, then we might not get to the final destination that God intended for us. Mm -hmm. So we might want to look into the circumstances through the eyes of the scriptures, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, so that we can get to the right destination that God has for us. So I really want to affirm that. And Addison, I see your hand raised in just a moment. But mm -hmm. that restless, rebellious spirit can literally cause us not to think clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We end up doing mm -hmm. foolish things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and okay. God loves us too much to want us to do that, right? Exactly. Yeah. He wants us all to be saved and to mm -hmm. rest in Him. Addison. Mm -hmm. God's love is immeasurable and unfailing. Mm -hmm. And we, we need to pray. We need to say every day when we get up in the morning and we, you know, the very first thought should be of Jesus. And we should say, Lord, take my heart, for I cannot give it. Keep it pure, for I cannot keep it for thee. Mm -hmm. And to pray, say, Lord, let this mind, let this mind that was in Jesus be also in me. Yeah. Beautiful. And Puya, all the way in, in, uh, in uh, Hawaii, I see your hand raised. A lesson mm -hmm. for us today. What, what do you hear? Yes, uh, St. Augustine once said, um, uh, in a prayer, he said, God, you have created us for yourself, so our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. And, and I believe this is the lesson that I take away from our study today, that we are restless as human beings in our search for peace and happiness and fulfillment until we look for it in the right place that is in Jesus Christ. Thanks so much for sharing. Shana, a thought from up there in Maine. We're so glad to have our remote team members with us. What's an important lesson you take away from our study today? Um, unless we have fully submitted all to Christ, our will will not be in His will, or yeah, His will will not be ours, and we're going to be restless. Wow. So it's important for us all to learn how to fully submit and that submission leads to ultimate rest in Christ, and, and that rest is the most beautiful thing that we can ever find. Mm, yes. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us. One last thought from a team member. What do you take away, Jason? Well, it really niggles down to faith, and anyone who knows me, you know, I love acronyms, so faith is forever admitting I trust Him. Mm. And in order to rest in Christ, and that's what it's about, resting, we having faith in Him, and that's the underlying message that I take away. Yeah. And you know, the Lord wants yeah. each one of us to rest in Christ. Mm -hmm. You say restlessness doesn't sound too bad, but it can lead to rebellion, mm -hmm. can lead to violence, can lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants you to find rest in Him today. Mm -hmm. He says, come to me and find rest for your souls. Do you long for that rest in your life today? Let's pray together. Mm -hmm. Our Father in heaven, thank you that you're more willing to give us rest than we're willing to ask. You love to give good gifts to your children, and I, I pray that you would give us rest for our souls today. Rest in your love. Rest in your presence. Rest in Christ. Thank you for that precious gift.